but it's I think it's so similar for me because I uh, it's so difficult with my friends like after college they're in different cities I'm in different cities they think I'm doing a mad I'm queen of the this madness but I I don't think that because um uh it's so important but I I always make time for the special events like marriage and stuff like that before I need to tell me five months in advance so I can take that holiday <laughs> otherwise I'm not getting <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, so these things and uh, it has kind of uh, made me a better planner uh, like otherwise I'm like a go with the flow kind of person <laughs> yeah, yeah you know yeah. I some things are good that way I'm I'm such a planner at work and for my long projects you know sometimes it's months out and so I'm planning for months and months um, <clears throat> so it's nice to have that kind of more spontaneous or creative side at home yes, with family or with friends or with hobbies or something yeah. you have to have something that is spontaneous and creative yeah. Yeah. because if it's too planned then you really come to that psychosis stage and you go really mad so well, I, I think it's, like uh, it's good that you have the courage to make career pivots because that's when we learn the most i've done that too you know like i finished my medical school and my internship um one year internship and um wrote my medical licensing exams and then i was planning to apply for post grad training when i found i was pregnant and mm-hmm. my yeah and my husband and i and i had already been in research you know because i wanted to get published like you uh and but i was supposed to use that publishing to um kind of propel my career in clinical medicine i was going to you know beef up my resume and that was going to help me get into a good post grad program and from there i would you know uh get into a, a good fellowship and this was my plan it was never my plan to stay in research okay <laughs> but i didn't count on loving it I love learning something new every day. I love being on the cutting edge. I love being the first person to know when there's a yes, new yes, and it's new so much fun. <laughs> yeah, and you don't necessarily get to be the first one when you are in clinical medicine. Whereas clinical research, yeah, a lot of times we are the first ones to know what's coming up next, and I find that thrilling. you know yeah and, yeah <laughs> to be in that position so um when i decided to stay in research and not apply not put forward my applications for post grad initially it was supposed to be temporary you know and then i would reapply a year later to a year later but then i had my second child <laughs> and uh i stayed home for two years i stayed home with my kids until they were both at an age where they could go to preschool and then I went back to school part time and I would do it all over again I tell you I wouldn't change anything cuz I have such a yeah I have such a close bond with my kids now that you can't make that up later that has to happen in the that age, time the age is gone right now yeah. yeah. Yeah, and I don't know how it is in Germany or other countries, but in the US it's really really tough to get extended maternity leave. You know, you you're lucky to get 12 weeks maternity leave, you know, and then you have to go back to work, but you know, babies are are nursing for months, sometimes 6 months to a year. Two years. You have to yeah. just take a ballpoint figure two years. I mean, it really depends in Germany. If you're yeah. with big companies, you will get that. Otherwise, six months. Maybe I, I, in a lot of cases I've heard that women had to leave. So you have to be like uh, you need to have they call it motor shoots uh, which my company I just changed my company so that company is offering it. So it's kind of refreshing to know because these things are not available in India and now that I'm planning my uh, company slowly slowly I think I will have these things you know in mind and like come up with uh, because I really like the structure uh, you don't earn a lot in Germany you because the tax is very high but it's really balanced you have a very balanced life and I have this time for the hobbies and I feel now it's important because 
last five years was just like studying, studying, in, in, experimenting, analyzing the data, learning the programming languages because I didn't know it as well. And now that I know, I feel I'm at an intermediate level. I feel a bit more confident and I have to struggle with the language. <laughs> so sometimes I think, why did I go to the U.S.? <laughs> 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 that's part because, of it, though. That's part of the learning process and, and part of growth. Mm -hmm. But yeah, it, it, at some point, you have to figure out a balance, right? So if you have, if you work for a company where they allow some of that balance, they build in, it's built into your, your mm -hmm. work day or your plan, your employee plan, that makes it easier because here it's really tough. And that's really why I took those two years off and didn't work for two years yes. so that I could have that dedicated time with one child after the other. And I, cause I had them kind of close together. And then when I went back to work, I could actually focus cause I knew that they were old enough. They were both in preschool. Mm -hmm. So I could actually dedicate myself at work. Otherwise, I would be at work feeling guilty about what I didn't do for my kids or I'm not there. Or are they OK? Are they missing me? Or, or, or is that bond still strong or is it breaking? Or I would be with my kids and feeling guilty about what I didn't do at work. Or I didn't put my 100 percent or, you know, I'm not advancing because I'm you know not concentrating, whatever it is. Yeah, you know? yeah. So sometimes you have to there. make a choice and everyone's different. Right. Um, some people can balance a little bit better. You just have to know yourself. I think it's important. Be very self-aware what you can handle, what you cannot handle, what's best for you. How are you going to be able to, you know, use your talents and wisdom and your passions the right way? And what's your threshold? So I learned a lot about myself during that career pivot, during that transition. And then, you know, again, um, I was in academia for a long time in clinical research after that. And then I made another pivot from academia to industry. Wow. Um, <laughs> that is tough. Yeah. So six years ago, I would say the first year of that transition was tough because academia is very kind of, it's kind of the same all the time. And, you know, what you're, as long as you know what you're doing, you, you know, it's, it's really tough to advance beyond a certain stage or beyond a, a certain um, speed, but you, your workload is kind of even, right? Whereas once you transition into industry, now you're at a corporate level, corporate um, behavior, corporate environment is very different from academia. You know, people, even speech is different. The words we use, the language we use is very different. Expectations are different. There's a lot more competition yeah. um, and it's private. It's not government. I used to work for, when I was in academia, I was, um, I was government. So that's a very different feeling. And in industry, it's, you know, at, at some point we have to make money, right? It's a, it's a, it's a business. It's a private business. It's not, yeah. it's not a not-for-profit. So in order to stay relevant, we do have to be competitive, right? So that's a very different feeling. I would say it took me about a year to get used to the, that change. In the time, yeah. yeah, but it was good for me. It made me grow. It made me mature in a way. I was pretty naive, I would say, before I joined industry. I learned a lot about behavior, about people's expectations, about underlying meanings uh you know when people anyway, say i would say the same because a lot of them i don't really understand what are they saying <laughs>